Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Welcome, 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 everyone, to another amazing episode of Referrals Podcast. We have a return guest today, but I have to ask you a question, and it's the question that I get asked a lot on panels. I, I get to serve on these panels as an expert panel. How the heck I got an expert panel? Usually it's by someone I know who asked me. They're a friend, so they're kind of like throwing me a cookie and saying, hey, can you be on the I was on a panel literally this week with the number one EXP agent in the world, the realtor of the year in San Diego, a multimillionaire, almost billionaire, and me. Like, I'm looking around the room like, I'm not gonna say anything. But one of the questions that I always get on these panels is, if you were dropped into a city where you didn't know anyone, how would you grow your business? And so I have some answers for that, but today, you're getting all the answers for that question. And one thing that I really love about it too, is that like, it's even if you aren't new and aren't dropped into a new city, these strategies are going to apply to you in maybe a way you've never looked at before. That's today's referrals podcast. I can't wait to get to it. So I'm going to get to it in just a second, but I got to give a shout out. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Anonymous. Yes. Today is from Anonymous. Please give your name when you're giving a rating or review. What the heck? Where have I been? I just found this podcast and I can't get enough. If you are in real estate, you must listen. Obviously, they listen to one of our real estate podcasts. But the bottom line is, Anonymous, how am I supposed to give you referrals if you're anonymous? You got to put your name, literally, it's a five-star review from Anonymous. Anonymous. That is what I call a secret agent right there. You got to give your name. Please give your name. I, here's the thing. I love the words, but I would love to refer you. I'd love to know who you are. And the other part of that, speaking of love to know who you are, join Gen, Gen for goodness sake. Join GenGen.com. The Generosity Generation wants you. We are a large referral community. We exchange referrals. We exchange ideas. We're here to share. We're here to help. And doggone it. We're here so that everywhere you go, you instantly have more value because any problem of a client or friend that you have, you can bring it back to the group, say, hey, listen, I've got a friend with a problem and we can solve it collectively for your clients, for your ambassadors, for your champions, for people you know. So join us at joingengen.com. We also have three masterminds that we're doing. We do a free mastermind the first Thursday at 1 p.m., gengenmastermind.com. We have a women's only mastermind in networking. Yes, it's called WOMAN, and it's an acronym, Women Only Mastermind in Networking. It's the second two uh, Thursdays of every month at one o'clock. You can check that out. And then also the third, we have a Gen Gen Fire session. It's an implementation session where essentially for an hour you get uninterrupted time to work on your business so we all we do all those things within join gen gen please check it out make it happen and speaking of making things happen we got to talk about our guest today who makes things happen a return guest because we got to get an update on what the heck's going on with her life so melissa kadermas how about that for correct pronunciation kadermas you're close Catermus, oh, whatever. I, uh, Catermus sounds so much better than Cadermus, right? It's 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 like you're not in dental work, right? You're Catermus, right? It's like Hittermus, Catermus, and that's how I'm going to have to remember it, right? Melissa has a bachelor's degree in nuclear medicine and biology. Anytime I see the word nuclear in a title, it's just so it's like. I'm not worthy with a minor in chemistry. So naturally she is a successful, so naturally she is a successful financial planner out of Fort Myers, Florida. Doesn't that just make sense that she would have a nuclear medicine, biology and chemistry degrees 
and be a financial planner. That's who I want taking care of my finances, right? A chemist. She has extensive experience as a business owner, big box retail manager, and as a CEO. She is a past commander for the Lacrosse, Wisconsin, U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla. Thank you for your service. She was an appointee of Governor Scott Walker to the Wisconsin Small Business Regulatory Review Board. She has a passion for entrepreneurship and strategic planning. She builds her advice-based practice by serving business owners and families who would like to have the Catalyst Wealth Group as a guide and resource for helping growing their businesses and supporting improving their financial life. She focuses on strategies for setting and helping attain goals, tracking success, and educating her clients on what the possibilities really are. Welcome back to Referrals Podcast, Melissa Cattermas. Thank you, Michael. Welcome I really back. appreciate you bringing me back on to tell the rest of my story. I'm telling you, love to have you back on. For those of you that listen to us, you might want to go to YouTube today and watch <laughs> it. First of all, uh, Melissa is a beautiful young lady. Second of all, she has a phenomenal Zoom background. I love one of the things that we're really helping our Gen Gen members is to up their Zoom game. You know, we, we, we've suggested that they rename themselves so that it tells their profession and location as well as their name so people know how to refer them so they're not anonymous, right? And we also talk about the Zoom background, how to use it to get more referrals. And I love the one that she has. So great example here today with, with Melissa's. And it says Thrive It in the background with the heart in the T, right? Love the how that aligns with our values. And it says Catalyst Wealth Group on the other side. So Catalyst Wealth Group, I'm, I have an affinity for Catalyst. As you know, we have Catalyst Coaching, which is create authentic transformation and launch your success today. So what is your Catalyst Wealth Group? Sure. So the Catalyst came from both Gen Gen and my science background, right? So yeah, I um, see it. I see yeah. it. Yeah. So Catalyst for us at, at uh, Catalyst Wealth Group is an acronym for our process in working with clients. Okay. And it's curiosity. So we ask lots of questions. Analysis. Take a look at everything after we ask. Uh, target goals. So we're going to help create goals and help you achieve your goals. We're going to take action. So A, action. Um, learning. We want to make sure that everyone, like a, you mentioned earlier, um, knows what they have and understands it because a lot of times there's a lack of understanding in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, yearly reviews, at least, so you can keep up, up to date with your financial status. Service in between. And then T is for tell people about us, please. <laughs> Wow. Like that's a, like a drop the mic moment. You, you not only took an acronym, but you made your, ta your acronym, your service process. Mm -hmm. It's like the ultimate, you know, we talked about the ultimate client timeline, right? And like you have taken your ultimate client timeline and created an acronym out of it. And then it's your name of your company. So it's up there every day as a reminder for you, your clients and your entire team. Brilliant. Okay. Love it. What are your values? You have values, core values that you've you've got for the Catalyst yep. Wealth Group? So our team values are both for our team and for our clients that we serve um, and how we serve them. First one, of course, is integrity, uh, trust and honesty in everything that we do uh, and being open and honest. Uh, team. So we do everything with a team atmosphere, two people on every case. So people know that there's always backup if one of us isn't available. Care meaning be curious and ask lots of questions, both of our teammates and of our clients. Um, optimistic growth mindset. We like working with entrepreneurs and we wanna grow our, uh, our team as well. And then uh, generosity in everything. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. That's, so that's a lesson to everyone right out of the shoot is uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to create an acronym for your process, but that's like, that's awesome. But at least have an ultimate client timeline. Like what is the process for the moment people uh, get curious or interested in you and take it all the way through to beyond the transaction? You know, uh, I'm on this rampage right now. Everybody's talking about relationships, you know, and, and everybody's saying, well, it's a relationship business or it's all about relationships. And, and I'm going to say, no, not really, right? Is, is uh, a lot of people have taken that to go from transactional to where it's just a money exchange 
to relational, which is, you know, relate to the person better and think I'm, I'm a huge fan for that, but I don't think we should stop at relational. I think we need to go from transactional to transformational and, and we're going to transform our clientele into ambassadors, brand ambassadors who speak highly of us and refer us willingly and are a part of our life and community forever. They're going to be a part of our tribe of trust, right? So we need to go through relational to transformational. And that's what I love about your, your YST is yearly review. You're going to be in their life every year, right? And you're going to do yearly review and you're going to serve them right? And, and you want them to tell everyone about you, right? And that's the T. So it, it, it's just like that's going from transactional through relational to transformational. So um, I love this. That was so powerful. All right. So you moved from La, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Is that, is that what La Crosse is named after? Or was La Crosse, Wisconsin named after La Crosse? Or is there a person named La Crosse? Do you know? After the game. What? The game lacrosse. It's the in, Indians played it in the fields of lacrosse before it was settled. There we go. See, I didn't know that. And I wasn't sure you knew that. And that's, you got to be careful when you're on a podcast. You only want to ask questions that the other person knows the answer to them. Uh, there's, there's, you, a big, there's a big statue right when you come into lacrosse off of the highway. And it's um, a few of the native Indians playing lacrosse. Like with the, yep. wow. Yep. That's, that is very cool. Uh, the school that I coach at, uh, they are very good in boys and girls lacrosse. Very good. And one of my coaching clients, Tanya McLeod, she just got, her daughter just got a, a lacrosse scholarship to Clemson, South Carolina, University of Clemson, big, big time lacrosse school. So um, lots of lacrosse on the mind lately. So I don't know why that is, but uh, so you went from lacrosse, La Wisconsin to Fort Myers, you moved across the country to an area where you didn't know anyone. I had never even been here before. Never been to Fort Myers, Florida. Not even a visit. Nope. Not once. What the, what the heck happened? Why'd you move? <laughs> what, what, you know, what so, moved you? Yeah. Well, other than uh, weather. Uh, yeah. Well, that was number one, right? Weather. Yeah. No more Wisconsin yeah. winters. Yeah. 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 Um, it really had to do with relationships to begin oh. with. Uh so Tommy moved from Wisconsin. Tommy Sandvik, VP Tommy of Sandvik, Catalyst. Very coach, good friend of mine. Mentioned yep. in the last three podcasts. We've got to watch that. Just how can you, just, how can you not I'm mention getting, him? I'm gonna get jealous of Tommy. <laughs> he's he's mentioned in every podcast. Like I know. Everybody loves Tommy. Yeah. Uh, I love Tommy. He moved down to Florida and um I started working with him. Uh, both, we mentored each other throughout the last 10 years. Like I started mentoring him and then he started mentoring me and it's just been a great friendship and we've helped each other grow our own businesses. And um, he decided to use one of our Thrivent action teams to put on a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And so I flew down to Florida to help him with it. Took a vacation out of Wisconsin. And this was a couple of years ago. And I kind of got hooked on Florida and started coming down. I started meeting more people. I started getting clients down here. And I thought, hmm, it'd be really nice to just be down here at least half of the year, you know, during the winters and go back up to Wisconsin during the summers. And so I started talking to our Thrivent leadership down here and said, hey, is there, you know, an area where you need someone? Is there a book of business that I can help serve, you know? And um, I just developed a really good relationship with the leadership. And after a couple of years, you know, and coming down a couple of times a year, I met with the leadership last August and they said, we have an opportunity for you and uh, you're going to have to move down to Florida to take it. And do you want to do that? And I said, absolutely. Where am I moving? You said, let me think about that a second. Yes, yeah, I, I would like to go, right? It's like, just, you know what? I'm going to have to think about okay. that opportunity. Okay, I'm in. You know. And he, the funny thing is he left the room after he said, you have to move to Florida. He's like, I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> he came back and, and I'm like, where am I moving to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like where in Florida, right? Yeah. So it happened to be Fort Myers. Yeah. And uh, so I, I love the book of business uh, conversation. Like we have to have that conversation because that is one of the things that if I were dropped in a city, I would need to join a team. Or I would have to find, like, if, if there were a book of business, that'd be a great place to start, right? But the problem with a book of business is a lot of times it is 
based on the relationships of somebody else. So you've got to be really good at bridging those those relationships from the get-go. So what were some of the challenges of taking over somebody's book of business and you know forging those, maybe not new relationships, building new relationships with people who had a relationship with a former financial advisor? Well, the, this particular area had a few reps that kind of cycled through. So oh, even a lot worse. of, a lot of yeah. them Lack hadn't of been trust. contacted in a long time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, I basically, one of the very first things I did was just sent out an email to all of the clients. And I said, we are here. We're going to stay here. We're not leaving. We're, you know, I want to build a relationship with you. So that was one of the very first things I did. Nice. So uh, do you know how many people saw the email? Because in today's world, it just seems like not a lot of people see an email, right? So, you know, as I start meeting them there and we've sent out several emails since, yeah. um, you know, it's, it, they're like, Hey, I keep getting your emails. I want to come in. So there's, That's awesome. you know, I don't know the percentage. I, I could probably find it, but um, yeah. You know. What else did you do to, to, to build those relationships other than emails? Because I know you, I know you did more than that. Well, I knew that when you're as a financial advisor, you need to have relationships with centers of influence because I need to be able to refer people, my clients to resources as mm-hmm. I'm working with them. You know, I need to be able to refer out. So I needed to build up my, um, you know, I needed estate planners I need real estate brokers. I need mortgage people. I need property casualty insurance people, um, you know, that I can trust and refer to. So that was one of my first things I had to do was develop a whole new network of trusted professionals around me that I could trust to, to send my my members to. I have a referral for you after the after this. Now that you just said that, I have a really, really good referral for you. Maybe the connection of a lifetime. I hope I it is. Anyway. That. So <laughs> I'm glad we had this conversation. Um, and all right. So you started to build these relationships through networking events or through uh, asking your members or clients or how, how did you start that process? Um, I do ask my clients who their trusted people are or if they have a trusted person because that's a, you know, a great way to start. Mm-hmm. But one of the very first things I did when I first moved here in that first week was I went to the two chambers of commerce that are in my service area in Cape Coral and Fort Myers. And I said, I'm going to join your chamber. I need to get to know you. I need to know when your events are. I need to know who I can trust within your chambers. And both of those chambers of commerce were super helpful mm-hmm. and um, continue to be super helpful and have been, um, you know, sending out my information when we do our fundraisers and stuff like that, too. So that was that. kind of the very first place I went. Um, we at Thrivent, we have what we call engagement leaders who help connect our um, members and our representatives to the community uh, and to philanthropic, you know, not, not for profits and that sort of thing. Cause we, we do a lot of that. And so I got in touch with our engagement leader here in the Fort Myers area. And she, one of the first things she said was go to this um, leadership luncheon. It's at this church. They do it once a month. They have great speakers, a couple, you know, 100, 150 people show up. Mm-hmm. She goes, you know, if you, if you can make it to that, go to that. So I'm like, all right, I'm in. I went to that and it just happened to be the speaker's topic was how to network yourself in a, in a room. <laughs> so he forced people to stand up yeah. and talk yeah. to three people in the room. Yeah. Two out of the three people became, um, well, one of them became my employee and the other one became a really good friend and we started a book club together and that kind of sparked everything beyond that. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. And, uh, that is a lesson there is join your local chamber right out of the chute. And, um, I want to talk about the triangle of trust a little bit, the conversation that people could have with, uh, their clientele or the people that they know it, let's say it's a real estate agent. And you know, let's say, you know, like Melissa, right? So I would call Melissa, right? And I would say, and Melissa, are you okay role-playing a little bit here? Okay. So Melissa, uh, so ring, ring, hello, hello. All right. So, hey, I'm calling the best of the best in my database, people like yourself who I really trust. I see them as like 10 level type of professionals, right? And so let me ask you this. Do you have a CPA? 
Yes. You do have a CPA. Okay. On a scale of one to 10 with one poor and 10 is phenomenal, best of class, maybe best in the world. Where would you rate your CPA? About an eight. Yeah. Eight. So what would it take for your CPA to be a 10? What could they do better to maybe be more communication? And man, I've heard that a lot. So, so here's the thing. I'm calling people like yourself, you know, my best of the best. And I'm asking them if they have a CPA and I'm going to get a couple of people who say their CPA is like a 12 on a scale of one to 10. I'm going to get two of the best CPAs in the city. If I happen to get a couple of CPAs that I think would be a really good match for you, would it be okay if I connected you to that CPA and you guys just have a conversation? There's no obligation or anything like that, but you know, these are people that I would really, you know, see referring. Is that okay? I'd absolutely love that. Yeah. So, so I'll do that and, and we'll make sure that's happened. Let me ask you this same question for your insurance agent. Do you have an insurance agent that's local here and, and helps you with, uh, let's talk home and auto, right? Um, I have the one I use. Okay. And how would you rate them on a scale of one to 10? One's poor. 10 is phenomenal. Probably about an eight. Yeah. Right. So what would it take to make them a 10? Uh, communication. <laughs> Yeah, communication. Wow. Somebody should write right? a book called like, The Seven <laughs> Levels of Communication, right? right? So, uh, so communication. Or if they referred people to me, and that would be nice. <laughs> right. Uh, two way street, right? Could be yeah. a two way street. And communication starts that process, right? But right. that's a whole other conversation for another day. But, but the thing is, is, is I'm going to do the same thing with insurance agents. And, you know, if I find one that, that maybe is a good fit, do you mind if I connect the two of you? Is that okay? I love it. Okay. So fantastic. I love it. Um, and so let's end the role play right now, but, um, let's say you would set a 10, right. And then I would, I would go for the introduction, right? Let's say you said the insurance agent was a 10. I would say a 10. I mean, that's fantastic. I love hearing tens, especially from tens like yourself. So who is it? And do you mind making the connection? Would you introduce the two of us? I'd love to meet them and possibly refer my network to them. Right. And, and then I would follow up diligently. You would say yes. And I would say, can you text her or him right now? Because I'm going to call him in an hour and you would text and say, Hey, please take this guy's call. I would call and say, Hey, listen, here's what I was doing. Can we meet? I want to know if I should refer you. Right. We meet, we have coffee. We it's great. I've got an insurance agent. Right. But the thing is I made 10 other calls and eight of them don't have a great insurance agent. So I go into the meeting with this insurance agent and I've got eight referrals in my pocket for this, for this, in, for maybe two or three insurance agents. So it, it's just a great way. And those eight referrals have already said they would like me to refer them. So they're, they're just a beauty in this triangle of trust strategy um, that, that leads to referrals, starts relationships on a, you know, on our start to referral relationship really. So um, thank you for bringing that up and, and utilizing it with what you're doing. I love that. Um, all right. So what were the steps that you took to build your team? So I'm still building my team. And a lot of that has been through networking and mm-hmm. doing events and meeting more and more people who resonate with our mission goals, values. Um, so through basically what happened is after I went to the networking events and um, met some people who wanted to then start the book club, obviously I started with seven levels of communication because I wanted to build a tribe of people around me who are educated in how I do business. And I wanted to see if they all resonated. And that book, um, we did, we took um, two months. What book was it? Seven levels of communication. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> and people loved it and they were sad that it ended. <laughs> like they're like, we need to like go through this again and like dive into more of the details and you know the little the like a whole session on power notes and and all that kind of stuff, which we're gonna revisit in the book club. We've gone through other books since then, but what? I mean, that's great. Yeah. So uh <laughs> all right, so you, you're building your team through networking. You're building your business through networking. What are, and you know, what are two or three 
keys to networking that has led you to su- success, right? I mean, give us a, a networking lesson, you know, or three. You're, you're one of the best networkers I know. So what is, I mean, forming the book club was genius, right? Yep. So you have somewhere to filter them to that's just not your office, right? right. What are some other, other keys that you've done? So I guess an example, just went to a Chamber of Commerce networking event. My goal in any one of the events is not to meet everybody in the room. It's to create somewhat of a relationship with three people. Like, Mm -hmm. I just want to meet three people. There's plenty of events. You're going to see these people again. They start to see that you're familiar and I have time. So I just want to have deeper conversations with maybe two to three people. So that's my goal going in this last networking event. I met um, someone who like walked right up to me and introduced herself and she was a litigation attorney and I told her what I do. And she turned around and she goes, you need to meet the estate attorney. And she introduced me to the estate attorney. And now we're going to um, do a one-on-one. I sent him a power note and he, he's, he said he wants to get together for lunch. And so we're, we have that planned. Um, the other thing that I do after a meeting or after a networking event and meeting someone is send them a text message right away saying, Hey, it was great meeting you. Um, looking forward to our one-on-one conversation and getting to know you more, or, you know, just something about the conversation that we had that way they have my cell phone number. Um, they're not going to forget about me. Uh, you know, and whether they lose my card or not, I've, I've already said hi. Um, yeah. And, Love the follow up text. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just ultra professional, unexpected, proactive, mm-hmm. super professional. Right. Who does yeah. that? Only the best do it. Right. So I love that. Um, very cool. And so how did you grow? How did you grow your business? You had a book of business that you had to really form those relationships, but you've also got new business coming in. Congratulations on that. So how did you grow that and build that? Yeah, so out of the book club and the relationships that I've built with those people, uh, they are now referring clients to me. Uh, One of the uh, people in the book club, Jason, is a real estate broker owner for Next Home. He had empty office space, so I rent from him. And so I am surrounded by realtors, which is one of my niche markets. Uh, And that became a really good COI. And all the people in the book club were just all really good friends. So they're referring people to me. I'm referring people to them. And that has created a a good uh, kind of a board of directors. We're helping each other grow our businesses uh, in several different ways. So just being surrounded by the people that are in my niche market all the time is kind of cool. And being in an office environment where I'm, I still need to hire people to help, but I'm mm-hmm. still in an office environment where there's other people here and there's community, which I really like. Yeah, the renting a space really puts you into the community a lot faster, right? Because you're forced to actually physically go into the middle of the community, yeah. you know? Well, and working really from home with a cat is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's hit or miss, cat or miss yeah. with a cat. So, all right. So, uh, all right. What are, what are your favorite, what's your favorite one or two strategies for referrals? Uh, definitely doing events. We do the networking for charity events, which we mm-hmm. just did one. We just finished well, actually two, but um, one major one. Uh, and getting referrals that way, the last, uh, ev- so we didn't do an event during COVID, right. And my move. And so this was the first one I did here. So I had to get pretty strategic because I don't know a lot of people yet. Right. And so I got really strategic with that and ended up for the, myself and my sponsors getting 20 referrals out of that, mm. uh, total. Um, wow. so that, and then I love power notes. Uh, after I meet someone and I want to develop a relationship with them uh, for business at any level, whether COI or client, I want to send them a power note. And then um, texting after I'm meeting someone, like I like I mentioned, and you know, of course, generosity. That's that's number one is just pouring into them and pouring into our community. So whatever so I can Several do. questions on that, right? So what's uh, what's one key to a successful event? 
uh, help. Yeah, <laughs> help. love that. Can't having help. sponsors and having them invite their tribe in. Mm -hmm. So you get a mix of people from, uh, you know, different. So you bring more people together who don't know each other and and you get more referrals out of that. Yeah, it, it's interesting is, is um, you know, it reminds me of, of Kansas City when I was building my business. We, um, I did I, I knew some people, but they, they, I mean, I was such a deadbeat, right? I mean, I was just a, I was just a 20 year old guy in Kansas City, right? Which, you know, it, it, I had no history of success other than sports really. But I, through networking, I met a, the Olathe Chamber of Commerce, Olathe, Kansas is a city, one of the most robust chambers in the country. And I, I met through a series of conversations, um, Dana, who ran the organization, right? Just by knowing her, my network just grew by about 80,000 people. Just, it's not who I knew. It was who the people I knew knew, right? So met her, went awesome. She knows a ton of people. Well, then through another networking group, I met a gal by the name of Denise, right? Denise Upa, now it's Denise Mills. And like, I didn't know it at the time, but I met her and we built a relationship. Well, with her, my network grew by another 120 to 150,000 people probably, right? So the thing is, is, is I didn't know very many people, but I just happened to build really good relationships with people who knew a lot of people. And I was never going to meet 120,000 people, or at least that's what I thought at the time, right? And, and so they already had their established network. And I, you know, one's Olathe, one's Overland Park and Leewood, and that's Kansas City in a nutshell in the Johnson County area. So that really ramped my business and accelerated my business. And that's a little bit of what you've been doing through the networking is you've met people who know people. So it's not always about meeting a lot of people. It's meeting the right people, you know, getting the right people into your network. The other thing, too, that I love about networking is when you went to a networking event, they didn't go, oh, you're from Wisconsin, right? Or right. they go, oh, you're new to Fort Myers. They didn't know, right? Here's the thing. They didn't go, oh, you're a new financial advisor, right? Even realtors, if you're new, you go into a networking group, you're a professional realtor. Not new, not, you know, just got my license. No, you're in there, you stand strong and tall like you're a top producer, and you go. Because you know what? They don't know. They don't know any better. They don't know that you, you know, had 17 jobs before. They just know what they see. So project that image of success and go right and just be confident in your ability to to make it work they didn't know i was a newer agent they thought i'd been a real estate agent for years right now if they would have asked i would have told them but they never ask they don't care they don't know if you're a new financial advisor or 12 years in right so it's one of those where you know going in and networking sometimes the best thing for someone is a change of scenery sometimes the best thing ever is going in and to meet a bunch of people who don't know you so that you can impress them and you can, you know, you can project. They don't have any preconceived notions about who you are, right? That's what I love about networking is you you are who you make you are, you know? So yep. I love it. Um, all right. So, so and then give us a, a, a tip around power notes. What's been a key to your success with power notes? Obviously following the rules, blue ink up into the right. Oh, the seven steps. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but basically, you know, if there's someone that you want to develop that relationship in, that's who you send the note to. Uh, you know, obviously there's some people that you meet who are like, you know, you know, that it's not going to go anywhere. I just, you know, I only do the key people. So people who might be COIs or potential clients, um, you know, it's, it's fun. It's you, I love getting the text back saying, cause I usually my PS is text me when you get this. And I love getting that text back saying, I got your note. This is so cool. Yes. We need to get together, you know, and I usually from that text message, schedule them for a one-on-one -on -one or invite them to my next event. There you go. And they're calling you, right? They're mm -hmm. texting you. Yeah. So that's attractive by nature when they're yeah. calling or texting you, they're coming towards you. 
And that's a great time to schedule that next communication so that you can build that relationship. I love that. All right. So uh, what are you doing in the form of generosity that's leading to to business, right? You said, you know, it, generosity, people don't typically look at that as a strategy. I said, what are the referral strategies that you are working for you? So how is generosity working for you? What are you doing under generosity that's leading to referrals? Yep. So um, just, I guess, the most recent example is my last networking for charity event. The charity that we brought in um, is One Life Fully Lived. And that organization, uh, teaches mentors how to teach people to do a roadmap for life. And their, um, the, their, I guess their target market for this roadmap for life workshop are people coming from disadvantaged situation, um, starting maybe from like high school age on up to any age adult. So they'll uh, take their workshops and they'll certify people to do the workshops and then they'll do the workshops themselves with people maybe coming out of um, rehab, drug or alcohol rehab. Maybe they came from an abusive situation. Um, Maybe they're just kids who've grown up in a disadvantaged neighborhood, you know, so those are kind of their target markets and they give them the basics for, um, you know, the different parts of your life that you need to set um, a goal for, um, you know, whether it's wellness, relationships, finance, um, you know, and those sorts of things. So they help them just set the building blocks for a good road roadmap for a good life. So I brought them into our neighborhood here in Fort Myers and Cape Coral. Um, and before the fundraiser, we connected them with three or four different charities that matched who their target market. And they actually came in and served our community by teaching the mentors and doing some workshops with the, the uh, you know, the, the people. Um, so Wednesday, Thursday, and half of Friday, they did that. And then we poured back into them with our fundraiser. Um, and then they went up to Orlando and did the same thing. And they did a couple workshops up there. And we did a quick fundraiser up there as well to create more awareness for them. So, so I love um, that. Yeah. How did that turn into business? So first of all, the organization, One Life Fully Live, got so excited about Thrivent and what we do with our action teams and our generosity and how we do these generosity events all the time, that they are now reaching out to other Thrivent um, representatives around the country to do the same thing. So it's helping them. And then they, the leaders are like, we need to introduce you to everyone in our organization because we all need help financially as well. So we want to come to you and have you be our girl. So Everybody who donates to One Life Fully Lived is an ideal client for Thrivent. You know, yep. I mean that's that's a that's that's the part of the generosity generation and and what we do that people a lot of times forget. I you know by spot by doing an event networking for charity, there are people who will choose you as a financial planner simply because they know that if they work with you and pay you then a part of that that they pay you will come back to the community and help a lot of people, right? They, they will. It's like you got three financial planners, you've got two that look normal and one who does a lot with charity. They pick the financial planner who does a lot with charity, right? I mean, because that's a differentiation. Yep. But the part that, and, and that's great, and you can stay there, but the other part of that that people really forget is that it also goes back upstream is whatever charities you're helping and working with have a donor list. And that donor list is, is the ideal clientele who gives mostly a lot of times it's the affluent, not always. Right. But it is one of those where, you know, and you're of the same heart. I mean, you're giving to that charity. Why shouldn't you network with other people who are giving to the exact same charity who have the exact same values? So there's, there's such, there's such a huge untapped resource in that, in that regard to grow your business, but also just like grow your life with like-minded people. So I, I love that you're doing that. Any, anything oh, relationship. else? Yeah. Yeah. Relationship. It, it is right. So any, any other words of wisdom, anything else around, you know, dropping into a city brand new, not knowing anybody and looking to grow their business and, and get 
entrenched into a a new environment? I think it's just finding your tribe, you know, and sometimes you have to like the, I think the perfect way to do that was through the seven levels book club and just inviting people. And, um, you know, it, it just, God, God's good. God has a, a path and he's going to help put you <laughs> where you need to be. I mean, when I walked into the office to look at the office space to see if I, if it was going to work for what I needed, I went into the training room and on the wall was your pyramid from your book right on the wall. And I knew that this was going to be home and that I was with the right people. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was at Jason's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, very cool. I'll have to send a thank you to him. Uh, wow. So, I mean, I tell you, there's so many great nuggets in this is that it's you, um, first of all, you have a glow about you like right now, like you're, you're on fire. I, I love, happy. I love what, yeah, you're happy. Oh my God. What a, what a thought, right? Happy financial planner. It's like, yeah. you know, uh, so I love that. And it's one of those where, um, what, I mean, how much courage and strength did it take to, to move, you know, state five States over moving South, not knowing anyone. And, and it's all up to you. It's all on your shoulders to, to build this network in this new, new home, new family, new everything, right? Everything's new in the area. And, and you got to build your tribe of trust and find your tribe and you did it right. And you're doing it. And like, there's, there's a, I mean, you're kind of on the backside of, of doubt and hope instead of faith. And like, maybe is it going to work? question and here you are on the positive side of that is like damn i can do it like i i feel like you should stand up and do the wonder woman pose because it's like that's that's you know we have this woman networking group that we're we're doing in gen gen right it starts the second thursday in april and and like you represent what we really want to help grow within gen gen is this strong woman woman is an acronym of course for women only mastermind and networking um and like that's that's it's just like we're just forming this and then i talk to you and it's like thank you like thank you for confirming that we should do this because you represent what's possible with that woman that that mastermind and networking group so you know yeah. thank you. it's and it's not easy you know the past six months or so god has closed a ton of doors on me and i went what why, you know, and, and I did not understand until the path finally led me to where I am now. And I have never been happier. That's awesome. Melissa Cattermas, thank you so much for being our guest today on referral. Thanks for Podcast. having me. I really had fun. Thank you. We're going to have to have you again in six to nine Absolutely. months. We got to keep this update going, right? right? So Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for another referrals podcast. If you have not joined GenGen, Gen, join GenGen.com. It's the generosity generation. It's a huge referral network. We would love to help you. We would love to share with you. Join GenGen.com. And remember to register for our masterminds, GenGenMastermind.com, and then Woman, which is our women-only mastermind and networking. And then also our GenGen Gen Fire session, which is the third Thursday of every month, where you implement for an hour you can implement anything you want we're there to help you it's one hour and we dive deep into anything that you want to really implement for one hour and uh ladies and gentlemen i really appreciate you thanks for being here we'll see you on the next episode of referrals podcast